record and then so yeah you are out live and then i'll drop your intro all right. Tell me you love me. I need a good laugh. I'm only one. Jack. You need a good back. I have it turned down, but I'm trying to find the video. How about that? You go to Podcast Detroit. I did. And then you find Share. Right. Let's go over. Here, I'll get my teacher hat on. Start a watch party. Yes. Time. We're broadcasting live from Podcast Detroit in Rock and Royal Oak, Michigan. It's time to take a leap of faith with Jackie, Rocky, Nora, and Gina for some entertainment and inspiration. Join them every Wednesday at noon. You can always find us at podcastdetroit.com. I gotta ask, what were you born to do? <laughs> it's Nooner time. Somebody bring me spirit. You see my bosom holders? <laughs> they look beautiful. Happy Thank hump you. day, everybody. Happy hump day. Hump day. Double hump yeah. for Nora. Huh? Yeah, double hump yeah, for Nora, double she hump said. Day for me. <laughs> yeah. How is that new bra? How's oh, the new my bra? God. Oh, they're just really? fabulous. They're just, yes, yes, they're wonderful. <laughs> Oh all, gosh! Staying upright, you know, it's like it's not <laughs> down to my stomach. <laughs> Gina, upright. you're laughing a little bit too much. <laughs> oh my goodness! The boys from last week still have not recovered, Nora. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, yeah. So look, guys, I was watching um, watching the news like I do, you know, Jackie says I watch the news too much, but I, I have to know what's going on. I can't help it. You so do. anyway, you watch it way too much. Anyway, any who, um, any who, any who they were talking about zoom and they were talking about how you should put up like fake backgrounds because, Oh yeah. Cause people can zoom in on your, um, your background and like get your address or see what's oh really yeah wow. yeah stuff like that so i was like oh i didn't even Ooh. think about that like they were saying some people will have like packages behind them and they can zoom in and get their address and then some people were um uh uh had like flowers and they might have had a delivery and they never um audio's a little off here oh you can't hear me sorry there we go. You got it? Now I can. It got okay, a good. Weird. Yeah. Okay. Well, all you can so, see in my backdrop is wine. <laughs> right. Empty That's bottles and Yeah. Nobody said I they were empty. I can hear it a little okay. bit. The um we got a little right. back back stuff going oh, on. Oh, that's interesting. Well, yeah, what I so, thought was interesting was that our conference call last night, Nora, with you, your husband <laughs> in the up. room. Shut up, Jack. Gina, yeah. did you hear that? Gina, I don't think you were on. No. Yeah, I was I trying to get you. Oh, so what happened was um, Nora <laughs> and Terry, I'm not quite sure what was going on over there, but I had her on speaker <laughs> because I was going to dial you in. And Olivia was in the room having dinner. And all of a sudden, Nora <laughs> thought we were disconnected. <laughs> because she thought she was muted. And she said, um, oh, honey, I'll be right there. This won't take long. This, we were just getting to the good part. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. I was so talking was about, we were, we're watching a show on Netflix. That's what <laughs> I was talking about. And I think, the, and it was I getting think you were to the good part. I think you were yesterday. You it were was getting to the, chilling. It was getting to the good part, Jackie. Shut up. <laughs> And it was, it was really, really good. It was really good. It's called um, Rectify. 
and it was really good. So we're on the last season, and we're getting to the good part. <laughs> All right. Sure, Dora. We'll go with that. Okay. Th huh? Yes. Thank, thank you so much. Yes. Yes, yes. Gina, okay. you got to turn your volume up. I can't hear you. Okay. It's up, Jack. I'm up. It's up as much as it can go. Is that can you hear now? Okay. Okay. Go ahead, Nora. What were you going to say? Okay. Yeah, so uh, now that I'm trying to finish my Zoom, <laughs> they were saying that, you know, you can get Zoom fatigue also, which I never knew that because I've never really been on Zoom. This is a new normal for everybody, right? So they're saying it, oh, yeah. it could um, increase your cognitive load. Your feelings and attitudes are conveyed because people can see you. You know, instead of just talking to you on the phone and they don't really see your gestures or your posture and, yeah. and you know, your facial expressions oh. and all of that. So they were saying right. you could get fatigued from that. And I was like, oh, oh well, good thing we're only on once a week. <laughs> yeah. You're not fatigued yet. Or you know, you? No, no, I'm not. But, you know, I, think I don't know. I think it's interesting because I know, you know, with all the kids and teachers who have gone back to school and so many yeah. of them on camera, I yeah. think that that's something that you, they can get, right. That right. you have to learn to, you know, you have to learn to, to build up stamina and you overcome. I know when I first started teaching online, like I would, you know, smile and then I'd be like, oh, in between classes, all right, give my little face a break, you know, and then go back. Yeah. And I think that's how it is when you're, when you, anytime you do any kind of show or performance, right live or something you're like oh gotta give my muscles yeah. so <laughs> right i agree i think i think that that does and a shout out to all our our people in michigan who've gone back to school yes yeah yes. i pray pray the pray the blood over everybody that they're safe i just yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. uh so hey next week guys we're gonna be in person though Yes. I'm so excited. I miss you guys. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so I, next I'm, week. We're going to be safe. We're going to be a safe distance apart, but we'll be in yes. the same room. Nora, mm -hmm. Nora, you make sure you have that bra on so it keeps oh. us. Hey, they're going to be up there. <laughs> <laughs> so we're celebrating our 200th episode next week, guys. Yay. Can you believe that? 200 I interviews. Can. I, I can't believe so it. I, and I, I think I, I think, think podcast I came, is. But, did I come on at the one hundred and fiftieth, or what? Did I? Come, <laughs> I don't know. I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. Or were yeah. you at the one so hundredth? I don't remember. We'll have maybe to the one hundred. We're going to reminisce yeah, a little bit. There. And yeah. I've been. Uh, right. um, You've been on when, Gina? Year, one year. About, one year. Has it been a wow. year? I know. Wow. It's wow. A, Feels long, fast. Fast, Jackie. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I think, so we decided we're dressing up because we think Podcast Detroit might have like awards or a ceremony or some surprise for us, next week. Yeah. Right? Just for us. Yeah. With a cake and balloons. Yeah. Is and, that what we're, yeah. we're dressing up? If, yeah. Yeah. It's all on the floor. Right. He didn't know this. Huh? <laughs> Still listening, he's just fallen on the floor because he didn't know this. Now, well, hopefully, he's making it. notes. Well, Dave, cancel the stripper because you know they make me uncomfortable, so don't have a stripper. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't want a stripper, no, definitely not. But all right, anyway, we have just an amazing, amazing guest on today. Amazing. So, why don't we get ready? Can we get ready? Yes. This segment is designed to showcase the stories of talented individuals who had a wish and found a way to make it happen. They set goals, overcame obstacles, and turned setbacks into comebacks. Their stories are unique, interesting, and most of all, inspiring. We are very lucky to have Detroit's music royalty today. Miss Thornetta Davis is with us. Hello, she, hello, ladies. Hello, hello. She is going to lift our spirits. She is the queen of blues, and she has captivated audience audiences all over the globe. You've been featured uh, alongside some many, some many well-known artists such as Gladys Knight and Bonnie Raitt. You've also been sought after to perform backup for many artists such as Bob Seger and Kid Rock. 
also can hear your music, I hear, on some HBO shows, such as The Sopranos and Xena, Warrior Princess. Your records, the Sunday Morning Music and Honest Woman, have taken you all over the world to perform, not recently because of travel bans, but we are so happy to have you here today with us on the Nooner Show, and we are ready to get up and dance our blues away with your presence. Woohoo! Welcome! Yeah! We're going to set everybody <laughs> free today. Yes. yes. Welcome. Glad to so, be here. Well, I am so, so happy to get to interview you again. You know, my first time, this is my second time, my first time we were at Hyped Up Live Sessions, yes. and you performed music from your CD, Honest Woman. And oh yeah. my God, it was yeah. so good. I, it, it, Jackie was like, you know, it was the first time we had a standing ovation at Hyped Up, and I, I couldn't yeah. stay in my seat, so I don't even know. I, I kind of like was in a, a, a different experience. I wasn't even paying attention to right. the other people. I just jumped up. <laughs> Was that was a fun show too. That it was, a was lot of so fun. much fun. You, I, I just, I, I love um, your persona. I love your band. I love the twins. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love your husband. Your you know. <laughs> yeah, Me. it's just the, it's you can feel the love through your music, and you. and you can feel the blues through your music. So, yeah. um, just let everyone know how you got started singing the blues and there why you go. go the blues <laughs> there you go i started singing the blues well you know i grew up uh listening to a lot of uh r&b and uh motown and and uh just we had the radio playing all the time then listening to my mom's record collection so we were always um listening to me and my sisters and my my mom we listened to different genres of music anyway and so when I started singing, I thought I was going to be like the next uh, Phyllis Hyman or Whitney Houston, the people <laughs> that were out at the time. I wanted to be like them, you know, so uh -huh. Anita Baker, all those hot top 40 R&B singers at the time. And I was with a group called Chanteuse, and it was me and the twins. Uh, we come out of high school together, and we decided to perform together as a group. Um, and then a transition from singing R&B to blues out of necessity. I used to go to jam sessions and, and check out these guys who were performing on the east side at um, a bar called The Red Carpet. And they mm -hmm. didn't do top 40, they did soul music and uh, blues. Mm -hmm. And a bunch of white boys, I had never hung out with white people before in my life, but I dug <laughs> this band, they were, they were awesome. And uh, so I went down there and I started listening to the music and I recognized some of the stuff that they were doing from my childhood. So I would just mm -hmm. sing background, just sitting there in the audience. And one of the band members who told me about the jam told the band that I was a singer. And, and they got yeah. me up to sing with them. Yeah. Uh -huh. They said, uh, get her up to sing. So I sang background for like two, three weeks. And then the audience started saying, hey, let the girl sing. <laughs> I knew one blue song. Uh -huh. I knew one blues song by heart, and that was Stormy Monday. And oh, said, wow. You know blues? I said, I know Stormy Monday. So I did Stormy <laughs> Monday. And then from that point on, the, the leader of the band asked me, would I join? And so then I became did you, a blues singer. Did you, did you feel when you, when you got up there, because you, like you said, you weren't doing blues. Did right. you, once you did the song and it was, you know, everybody loved it and all of that, mm -hmm. did you... Did you feel it? You know, did you feel like this was Get something? That you... Well, actually, I, I, I try to choose songs that I relate to. So when mm -hmm. that, someone asked me to do that song, I mean, we all been through it. I call it Stormy Monday, but Tuesday just as bad. You can relate yeah. to whatever experience you're going through. And I think I might have even been in a, a relationship that was always, I was always in a relationship that just wasn't quite right. Uh huh. So, so you I had really, the blues and you just I didn't had know the blues it. anyway, <laughs> right? Yeah. And so I'm singing this song and then the audience loved it and and then like maybe a week later, uh, the owner, I mean the the leader of the band asked me to, would I like to join? And I was kind of you know worried about my girls because they didn't ask them to join and I was like needing the gig. Mm -hmm. So I thought you know if I join the band maybe later on I could pull them in you know. It didn't happen, but 
life worked worked its way yeah. out. Yeah. Um. Mm-hmm. So I was with the, it was a band called the Chisel Brothers, and I ended up being with them for almost ten years. And basically, I just oh. showed up, sung. They wrote songs. I recorded an album with them, and um, just picking out songs that related to me and my life. And I started winning awards, and people started hearing about this new blues singer. And and here I am, 30 years later, the Detroit's queen of the blues. Wow. Yes, so, you are the queen. Yeah. I tell you. Yeah. You know, they gave me a real coronation and everything. So did they? Oh wow! Yeah, I, I had a, I, well, yeah, yeah, that, 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 that title. Yeah, that that title it came. was yeah. that you were, it was a ceremony that you were yeah. given that title to. So tell us about that because that yeah. really is your title. Mm-hmm. Well, the original Detroit's Queen of Blues was Alberta Adams, who was one of my mentors. Um, I used okay. to sing with her, and we would tour together around the, you know the country and everything. But when she passed away. The Detroit Blues Society said, "Okay, we know who we want next," and uh, they came to me not long after, and I told her it was too soon. I told us too mm. soon, so they waited for about another year, and then they said, "Look, we want to really do this. We want to make you Detroit's Queen of the Blues." And so, why? Why did you say? Why did you think it was too soon? Because she had because been... Al- Albert had just passed away. Okay. You know, and her manager yeah. was sitting there and everybody was telling me I'm the queen of the blues. We were actually at her funeral. And I'm like, no, 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 don't even talk to me about that oh, right now. Yeah. You know, and so yeah. that's when they approached me a year. I wasn't even thinking about it. And a year later, I got a call from the Blue Society again. And mm-hmm. they said, well, we want to do this and we want to throw an uh, event. And my girlfriend, who at the time was with the Blue Society, she gave an event called Blues Girls of Summer. And she goes, that's what we're going to make it at your coronation. And they invited a bunch of the Detroit blues female singers to be a part of it. And I ended up with oh, a wow. crowd. Oh, wow. I wish I would have seen that. Wow. Oh, God. Yeah. It, was, it was a beautiful event. And, and my family yeah, sure. was there. Yeah. And the city, the city, state, and county gave me proclamations. And Alberta's oh, wow. grandson, Alberta's grandson and um, her children actually were the ones that put the crown on my head. Oh, oh yeah. wow, that's wonderful. Yeah. I think I read okay. I think I read somewhere it's been five years this year. Five, five. Years. Oh, okay. oh wow. Congratulations. Thank what you. an honor. I think I read somewhere that you were in a talent show when you were fifteen. Yeah. I was so <laughs> nervous. But I, I used to love to sing. I used to love singing as a child. We we didn't grow up in going to church or anything, but I just sang around the house. I would make people sick, waking up the neighbors, just singing. And one day my sister, who was uh, working in a summer program for teenagers, and she said, we're giving a talent show, and they got a band. I think you'd be great. And I was like, wow, I never sung with an actual band. I've always been in like high school choirs. But never saw it with an actual band. I said, okay. So all you got to do is audition. And I went down there and I auditioned for the, the show's product producer. And he goes, okay, you're in the talent show, but I'd also like for you to sing as a part of the production before the talent show. <laughs> and I was like, okay. <laughs> you know. And, and so- my mom was surprised because she never really heard me in that aspect other than singing around the house, you know. And that so, was yeah, my next question. So, no, where, yeah. where, did, where did your voice come from, though? That's what I'm saying. Where did it, it, it? Yeah. So was it, it, it was, was any one of your family singing, or it was just you? You just had this. I voice? think my dad, my, my father had a great voice. Uh, mm-hmm. He died when I was uh, coming out of high school, but he, he, I think he sang around the house a lot, and and um, then my mom and and him got a divorce as a when I was like. I don't know, 10 maybe, I was a child. So I remember him singing around the house. And my mom had a nice voice too because she sang in the church choir when she was a young girl. Okay. I, I was assuming both of them coming together made this voice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Okay, Gina, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, 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 that's what, all I was gonna say as a follow-up is you've come a long way from a high school talent show to the <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it took a lot to overcome, I had to overcome a lot of, of self-doubt, a lot of fears. Yeah. Um, 
It wasn't something that. When, when did you? When? When did? When did you realize that you really had an incredible gift? I, you know, I always, I think I always knew that I had a good voice because I used to like listening to myself, even as a child, just singing myself to sleep. But I, mm. I was scared to do it in front of people for a long time. And wow. even getting into high school, I didn't ask the teacher, could I sing? I found out you could take a class and just make it, just check the class off and you just be in the class. And then there was another class in high school that was like a special class for people who could really sing. And I always wanted to be in that class, but you had to audition. And I didn't mm. want to audition. I just, so for like three years of my high school, uh, I just didn't do it. I was just too nervous. And one day my music teacher went walking around the girl's glee. And she goes, you, I want to see you after <laughs> class. Like I did something wrong. <laughs> and then he goes, I want you to join my vocal ensemble. And that was like the biggest, best news I could have ever had in my life at that time. I'm going to be wow. a part of the prestigious Southeastern High School Vocal Ensemble. It's <laughs> 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 major to me. You know? Here I am in this cool ass choir. Basically, that's what it was. And yeah. that's when it all took off. Um, they had a talent show that year. And I was asked by the piano player to do the, you're doing this talent show. This is what he said. You're doing this talent show tonight. And he played piano for me. And I sang a song by Angela Bofield, This Time I'll Be Sweeter. Oh, um, I love that song. I love that song. I was yeah. heavily into uh, Angela Bofield and yes. Phyllis Hyman when I graduated yes. high school. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and yeah. that's and what you, I was. You, you definitely have to have some pipes to sing both either one of those. <laughs> yeah. And you, and yeah. you have them. So, we, yeah. we know she has them. Yes. Um, you have, so, Renette, has. so how did you go from um, having so much self-doubt? Because it just, mm. watching you on stage, you watching a live performance, or just yeah. listening to your music, uh, it's, it's hard to imagine somebody mm -hmm. like you with that talent and with the way you perform on stage, having any type of self-doubt at all. It's just well, really you know, hard. I, so how did you go from that point to where you're at today? I, I think we all go through a, a period of time when we don't really believe in ourselves. If you if you haven't, then I say good for you, you know, because when you grow up as uh, in the inner city and especially using the skill that God gave you, it seems to be something that we're always taught to get a job or go to school and, and and do something else totally it has nothing to do with a, a natural talent because your natural mm -hmm. talent is just something that's supposed to be a hobby right and you can't right. really get a job singing and, and things like that was something that i was i was raised up uh believing and and when i finally got my first gig paid me a hundred dollars i was in shock at that price i was like yeah, i made a hundred dollars <laughs> i made a hundred dollars singing and what was your first gig what was that what was the first, what was that? The hundred dollars? First gig? thing, it was a studio session um, with the girls. And even okay. the person that paid us told us that you should not make less than this when you sing. Because prior to that, we would do shows basically for free. Yeah. You know, or for the door and, and we'd all end up with maybe $10 a piece. You know, something like that. But <laughs> yeah. we sang, we, yeah. we were doing it for yeah. the experience, you know. Yeah. Well, I'll get something to eat yeah. afterwards, but nothing paid us a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. And so when we first got that money to, to, we could actually go shopping and I could pay for things for my daughter. You know, I had a little girl like, okay, maybe, maybe I can do this, but it wasn't regular enough to believe in it. And my first steady gig was with the Chisel Brothers. And every week I was actually getting paid to sing and I was performing and I started traveling out of Detroit, even to go up north uh, to Traverse City was a big deal to me. I'd never been out of Detroit. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. all started in 1980, 87, 88. Um, and, you know, performing all over the, the country and uh, actually the, the um, what they call the Midwest with the Chisel Brothers helped me to travel and learn how to travel and meet people and talk. Cause I still was one of them people that was still a little shy 
the other mm -hmm. lead singer in the band, he would do all the talking. And I would just sing. I did that for 10 years, just show up and sing, do my part. I didn't book anything. And you happy to do that. <laughs> I was happy to do that, you know. Uh -huh. yeah. And then it got to a point where I felt like something was going to explode if I didn't um, expand my horizons. And mm -hmm. I got asked to uh, be signed to a label out of Seattle called Sub Pop. And I and that was an You're alternative. You're kidding me. That was an alternative. Wait, rock. wait, 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 wait. You you uh -huh. were signed. Are you you were signed to Sub Pop? I was signed to Sub Pop. My my album was called Sunday Morning Music, and I was signed in a, a band from the Mich Michigan Ann Arbor area called Big Chief. Asked me to sing on their album, mm -hmm. and they were signed to Sub Pop. Then they got signed to Warner Brothers. But Jackie, you were supposed to know that. <laughs> well, at that time, well, Nirvana. Wait, wait. The, the, I, yeah. That's what, well, at that time, uh, Nirvana uh, and uh, all the, of them were a the big, big deal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sound we're the founders of, of the genre wow. of sub pop. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So we're, when I went on the road with the, the big two guys, of I was brunch. wearing my flannel shirts, my jeans, <laughs> I was head banging. <laughs> <laughs> I toured. They wow. took me over to Europe with them. That's when I really started oh branching my. out. Wow. And the song that they used on the Sopranos was from that album, Sunday Morning Music. Wow. wow. That, yeah. that basically so, got me out. Mm -hmm. you know? um, when I got out, because when, when I was singing with the Chiller Brothers, I, I like I said, I did what they asked me to do. And but when I got signed to Sub Pop, the label didn't want the Chisel Brothers. They wanted me and they wanted the Big Chief guys to produce my album. And I, once again, I, I, I still was in that situation where I did what they asked me to do. But mm -hmm. that's when I started writing. I okay. Had, I had that was my next question. Yeah. Yeah. The when the label song? signed me, I told them, I'm not a writer. Y'all gonna have to get me a songwriter. And so I was signed to them for about six months and I didn't have any songs. The, the band had music, but I didn't have any lyrics. I was, I wasn't even concentrating on writing. I was in a, a, a relationship that was really messing up my head and I felt mm -hmm. stuck. Mm -hmm. And I was just concentrating on that bad relationship and not doing what I needed to do. And the label said, look, if you don't start writing, we just gonna drop you. Oh. And I said, okay. And then I went to the studio with one of the producers. They say, well, just write about what was happening with you right now. And so that first song for that album was called Sunday Morning. Mm -hmm. I just happened to be at home, looking out my window one day. And at that time, they were closing all the Catholic churches in my neighborhood. And um, I would actually look out my window and see crackheads going around the corner, buying crack and, and mothers walking down the street trying to get that next fix. And I started writing the lyrics. I remember church on Sunday morning, people shouting, clapping and saying amen, choir singing songs like Precious Lord and uh, families come together once again. Now on Sunday morning, church is closed and I don't see the people coming around. Wow. Um, it is the lot. I don't see the people coming around. Sadie's, which was a name for mothers. Mm -hmm. Sadie's on the corner strolling around. Mm -hmm. And that's those lyrics wow. came to me for that song. So that's why the album is called Sunday Morning Music. And then after I did that, I wrote a couple of more tunes. And then I said, okay, I can write. You I'm can do this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I kick them out every day. You know, uh -huh. but when I do put but kick them out, they it. end up being pretty good. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I, I, I think you just take you it's in you from what I could see, is just you know you take the time. It, it it's a time thing for you. You just you have to look at your surroundings, like you said, and and what you're going through at the time, mm -hmm. and then you you go really deep. So because I can tell yeah. you know. Yeah, really. I deep write from my experiences. As I do. I can't write from anybody else, and I got to write from my own experiences. That's why I always yeah. say I'm telling my business. If you want to know <laughs> what I'm going through, just listen to my songs. Uh -huh. Yeah, is it, it? And that's kind of true, really. Actually, with a, a lot of musicians and artists, mm -hmm. we've interviewed quite a few people that talk about the process of writing, and mm -hmm. they write 
based on what they're going through. So let me ask you this. What have you been going through during uh, this whole crazy yeah. time that we're all okay. in? Yeah. COVID, okay. the civil unrest, everything that's happening right now. Are we going to hear a lot of songs next year from artists that are, you know, maybe a little depressing or sad? Do you think we're going to get a whole slew of those? Um, like, what have you been doing? I always try to write from a more positive aspect of my life now. Because when I wrote some of those songs in Sunday Morning Music, it was really dark. It was a dark time for me. And I didn't see a way out. But if you listen to some of those songs, it comes up, it ends up being a hopeful situation. So it seems like I always write from a hopeful aspect. And I do hear a lot of artists writing songs now talking about what's going on, the civil unrest and, and how we gotta uh, stand up and all that kind of stuff. And I, and I haven't written one of those songs yet, but I do write from a positive aspect of, of, of uh, like I believe everything's gonna be all right. I, I think mm -hmm. God gave yeah. me that song so that who, who knew that it was gonna be played so much this, this year. Yeah. My album's yeah. been out for four years now, and it's not been played as much as it's been played this year. Um, while I've been off work, mm -hmm. I've, I've been receiving money from radio plays from, for that very song. Wow, what and a blessing. Yeah. I'm like, I didn't think, I thought, you know, your album's out four years, it's considered old. But, but I think, but I th are we talking about Get Up and Dance Your Blues Away? It, that one too, but they've been playing. I believe everything's going to be all right. I love. I believe. I love that song. Yeah. Yeah. You know, set me free yeah. on heavy rotation on on radio stations all over the world, especially Sirius XM. Yeah, and I think all those songs have become have kind of become like a, you know, a mantra or an anthem or something that people. Yeah. Yeah. You know. People will post on Facebook. Look what I woke up to this morning, and I'm like. I didn't even know they're playing it like that until people started <laughs> taking pictures of it and showing wow. it. Yeah. And then what? I could check it well. Thank you God. It's like it's very hopeful. It, it leaves you with a lot of hope because yeah. people are, everybody goes through something. It doesn't have to be right. just COVID. We all mm -hmm. going through right. some kind of hell in our life. Yeah. Always. Right. But trouble don't last always. No. You know? Right. Yep. Growing Gina. Up, it, in my situation, I had an alcoholic father who was mm -hmm. abusive. And when you're a child, you don't see your way out. But even as a child, I remember thinking, I'm not going to marry somebody like that. I'm mm -hmm. not going to get to that situation. I had that thought in my head. But then I grew up in that situation. You do the same thing, yes. You know? Yes. So yes. when I came out of it, I started writing. And that's let's talk about the song Set Me Free. Mm -hmm. That song right there was the last song I wrote oh, for the album Honest Woman. Video. It was a prayer because so many years I was caught in the I can't wait to do my next album. I mean, most of the songs on Honest Woman were written 20 years before it was released. I was performing them on stage because I just felt like I had to get it out. Mm -hmm. 20 years, people were like, when are you going to do your next record? And I kept saying, soon come. And I thought I could get a major label to sign me or a major producer to produce it. And then I was going to do all this stuff by the time I turned 50. Well, when I turned 50, none of that had happened. And I was still just singing in the clubs and no label. My band members were like, when are you going to record now? Looking at me, recording with other, they were recording with other people now. And I said, I'm not holding none of y'all back. If you feel like you got to go do it, I'm waiting for the... The, the, it's like like the story in the Bible when you wait for God to come and he tells you, I, I gave you all the tools. Mm -hmm. but by, by 50, I realized I had all the tools. So now mm -hmm. I just have to step out on faith. And so I went to the studio. I didn't have a lot of money, but I paid for one song at a time. Everybody that I wanted to play on the album, I asked if some of them said no, but most of them said yes. Um, and, and, and like Kim Wilson, he was my first major uh, national artist. And I met him years prior, but he gave me his number. And so I called him, I, I asked him, you know, 
will you play on my record? And he didn't get back to me until the date that I had scheduled because I knew he was coming to town. And so I, I said, I got a, a studio time scheduled for you. I'll pay you and I'll come pick you up. He was on Ann Arbor performing at the Michigan Theater. And so he called me the night before the session. Thank God I booked that session. I said, now, what is this you want me to do? And I said, well, I just want you to come in and play harmonica. And wow. um, so he, I said, I'll come pick you up and drop you off. Well, as the epiphany came to me that morning, I said, well, maybe I can get him to sing. So I printed the lyrics up, color coded them. And when I went and picked them up, wow. I said, I'm going to pop the tape in so you can hear the music. But what do you think about singing a verse? He heard the song. It was a pretty good song. I think I could try it. And I gave him the lyrics. And he was like, that was the first song in the album. My, my, my sister's wow. poem is the first first actually, mm -hmm. but after her poem is that first song, I Gotta Sang the Blues. Wow. So what and is that, Dornetta? Wow. I Gotta Sang the Blues. When you, when you say um, you have not because you ask not, right? Right. That's right. <laughs> I, 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 you gotta ask for what you want. All they can yeah. say is yes. Yeah. Yep. That's so true. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, in the song Set Me Free, one of the lyrics that I, I absolutely love, it says, I want to be a part, I want to be a bigger part of your plan. I want to be a part of a, your greater plan. Because mm -hmm. the what, music, what is I, the greater plan? Well, you know, I believe that music is a healer and it brings people together, no matter what race or age or whatever, it brings people together. It's magic. And so when we're going through all these hard times and we're going through all this hatefulness, I get people who, I don't know, I didn't know what, what, what kind of walk of life you're coming from. When I see them, it's like, never thought you'd like what I do. But then some people say, I don't, I really never like the blues, but I like your blues, you know? So it helps people. Or somebody was going, I was feeling really down until I heard your song, or I needed this today. And I say, then I'm doing my job. I don't know what God got planned for me. And that's how I live my life now. Okay, I don't know what you got planned for me, Lord, but I'm open to it. Because when I'm in charge, it don't work. When he's in charge, <laughs> yeah. everything happens for the yeah. good. And so yeah. that's why Amen. I asked God, come to me. Set me free. I, I asked him to set me free from fear because a lot of the, the things that kept me from recording the album was fear. I was caught up in fear, thinking I couldn't do it, um, watching everybody else do it. But I thought I needed somebody to take charge again and do it for me. Just tell me what to do and I'll do it, you know? And so when I decided to go into the studio, I called up one of my favorite engineers. I said, look, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna call these particular musicians. We're gonna lay some bed tracks, at least get these three songs down. And it just took one song at a time. I like to perform, but I don't like recording in the studio. I just want to sing, but I know recording studio and, and recording a record is necessity. And if I'm going to do it, I want it to be the best thing that I, that I ever put out. And I've had to go back, listen to some tracks for over a year, thinking this is not it. Everybody telling me, it's okay. I'm like, no, I don't want okay. I want to be what I'm hearing in my head. So I had to go get yeah. some more musicians to re-record this particular song and got it to be way, the way I want it to be because I wanted to be wow. able to live with it for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And every time I hear this song, I'm so thankful that I did what I did. And that's how I, I learned from it. The next album is going to be the same way, whether I get a major producer or a record label or not. I know I can do it now, you know, just from doing Honest Woman. Mm -hmm. That's what uh, wow. set me free. Are you, uh, are you free. working on an album? I'm writing songs. <laughs> I haven't started recording the actual songs yet. But I, I am writing songs. And uh, I wrote two since this uh, stuff started going down. I've, I've written a couple of songs. And I sing them to my Ooh. husband. And I've actually sung them to some of the band members. Like, oh, I like that one. You know, so it's about getting together and putting the music with them now. It's a different thing now, though, because we can't get together like yeah, we used to. Yeah, right, right. Um, when I was writing before, I would sing a song to the band, and they put some music behind it, and we just perform it the next show. And then throughout the years, you get to singing it wow. and performing it the way you want it done. 
and you get to to I get it in my spirit the way I want to sing it on my record can't do that now you know because we don't have the yeah. show so yeah it'd be a lot of getting together six feet apart mm -hmm. rehearsals yeah. until the next time yeah. Yeah. how do you see what's been the highlight so far for you with uh traveling around the world audiences i know you're big in italy um yeah so what's been uh, oh my god yeah, what's been, like year, the, the highlight the highlight, the, the, the bringing my sisters in, my girls, because for years I've been telling them one of these days, y'all got to get y'all passport because I'm going to be able to afford having y'all travel with me. Well, last year was wow. that year. And we, t we went to wow. Italy. We did some more uh, Midwest gigs. We were going to New York this year. I was headlining a festival. They said I was the first female headliner in 20 years. And the last one was Coco Taylor. And, but they're going to bring you back next year. Wow. So they're going to just postpone. Um, I had some more Italy this year to do. We were going to um, Paris. No, not Paris. We were going to France. Um, we were going to, to uh, Brazil, wow. Spain, Spain. I had some stuff coming, girl. And I still look forward to doing it. They're just going to put it off. Yeah. Postpone it yeah. until the, the virus is done. But just being able to travel around the world with my girls, and we were all like teenagers again, like, girl, can you believe this? <laughs> oh, how fun. It was, you know, how fun. You know, mm -hmm. you know it, 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 cause me traveling with the band, I enjoy it, I enjoy it. But when you got your girls with you, it's just a whole nother level. Yeah, yeah. You know? And then yeah. I just thank God, my, my husband, who's a retired city worker. He's in the band too, he plays percussion. Just to be able to travel with him, you know, it seems like God just worked everything out. And uh, I get to share my music and just dance and sing and do the things I always dreamed of doing. A lot of that was happening last year. Yeah. yeah. We went to Denmark, he's over here. Yeah, we went to Denmark, <laughs> that was fun too. Well, we're what's, so glad- What's been the hidden blessing? Go ahead, mm -hmm. Jackie. I was just going to say, what's been the hidden blessing that uh, you've discovered through this whole um, having to shut down, not shut travel? Down. The hidden just, blessing. Um, yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, um, I thank God that, that he put me with somebody that I can live with 24-7. And <laughs> we, we, we love each other. Because <laughs> I've heard a lot of folks breaking up around this time. Too. Yeah, right. Yep. Yeah. Um, oh, that's funny. You know, I, and I'm just thankful that he put me with somebody who who gets me, and I get him, and and uh, you get me, honey. <laughs> <laughs> that's been the be the biggest blessing that I'm not by myself alone. Because there's a lot of lonely people. Who are yeah. yeah. Well, what what advice do you have for people, or um, especially musicians? Because for the people that musicians, like a lot of people who make a living out there yeah. doing what you know, and and everything stopped out of their control. What advice do you have to help people reconnect with uh, what their purpose is once this all passes, versus giving it up? I, I would advise just stay doing something musically, even if you gotta put yourself online. Hopefully, I, I didn't know that Facebook stopped folks doing that. Can you still play online and do a little show if you want to? Just go online and do a live thing. I'm hoping that doesn't stop because that keeps people at least out there mm -hmm. in front of some kind of audience performing. Uh, right. I was able to do that during the pandemic. I call it the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. Oh, damn it. <laughs> yeah. I like damn that. the pandemic. I've been saying it so much. That's that's what's coming out of my mouth. Pandemic. So I've been able to do that. People have been hiring me to perform uh, online for their online productions. They'll hire me to sing one or two songs, and I'll record myself, send it to them, and then they'll air it. You know. Um, mm -hmm. So that keeps me out there. It's not me traveling all over the world, but it does keep me out there. 
long as you're performing in front of somebody, I would say just do it. Don't stop singing. Don't stop writing. Stay hopeful. Because mm-hmm. music is going to be the thing that, that heals us and bring music brings people together. And I think when we do start to get back together, it'll be the music that does it. You know? Right. Right. Everything's yeah. gonna be all right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yes. Well, just for people that are tuning and watching this, we were planning on showcasing a couple of the songs, but we just found yeah. out from podcasts that uh, Facebook has a whole bunch of new rules. So you might want to tune into their show um, on mm-hmm. Monday night because they are going to have an entertainment attorney on talking about these new rules that Facebook has okay. with uh, not playing music, um, which I, I told him, I said, this is her music. Why can't we play it? And right. apparently Facebook... Um, could I sing? Can I, could I sing? Yeah, sing something. Yeah, yes, you can sing. sing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Hold up. Let me see what I can do. I'm not sure. There we go. See, Facebook, we'll find a way. There's always a way. <laughs> <laughs> let me see. Let me see. I'm, I'm not sure. We're getting a live performance here. Yeah. I was going to suggest that a few minutes ago. <laughs> Yeah. I'm gonna see if I can be set me free. Yeah. Don't set me free. Okay. Hopefully you'll be able to hear. Oh my look, guy, hold up. Let me let me stop all of this. In the meantime, while she's getting ready for her, oh. I think she's ready. I think she's ready. Yes, you want you want to say something? I just want to say that uh, uh, Thornetta Davis, all her music, you can find it on all social media sites. Make sure you follow her because uh, as soon as these live shows can start up again, you yeah. will not want to miss. And you can her check show. her out just on Hype Up. It's an incredible you can, production. You, you can check her out on Hyped yes. Up Live Sessions. That's right. And yeah. Spotify and all.
Unbelievable. Oh. I, yeah. anybody who I don't know how that sound coming through. But. Oh, amazing. <laughs> Unbelievable. I think anybody who's listening certainly has been able to set their own, their feeling of angst free today after listening. Yes. Oh. Yes, no, yes, yes. Hey, let's, okay. let's, before we have to well, go, the hold, fortune hold cookie. Yep. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Hold on real quick. All, All right, right, Thornetta. Your social media sites, do they just look up Thornetta Davis and that's all Yeah, just look me up. I'm on Facebook right? all the time, Instagram all the time. I'm on, uh, what else? Okay. Uh, Spotify, hi. Everything you, you send a message to, okay. you're sending it directly to me. I don't have like that social media. Oh, channel. okay. It's just me. <laughs> okay. All right. You. Okay, great. Yeah. And um, if, if, do you, uh, mail hard copies of CDs, like if somebody wants to buy that, because to me, your, yes, your stuff's collected. You can get them through Amazon.com. Yep. You can get them through Amazon.com. Oh, okay, Amazon.com. Yeah. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, listen, this the, the set me free, I have an idea. I think you should do a journal. Yeah. With On, that uh, song, using those lyrics. Uh-huh. So, so what's that song? What do you mean? I think you got to create a journal, a set me free journal to sell with that song. Oh, okay. Yeah. Jackie yeah. And her journal. Jackie's always, she's always thinking, always, always. So what do you mean always. by that? Like, I just think it should be a journal. journal. Like, that that song down. should be a journal. The lyrics throughout where people can write how they want to be set free. Set free, like, yeah. Like how you, oh, wow. your song came, you were praying that because of the things yeah. that you were trying to be, you know, trying to get set free. There's a lot of people right now that yeah. could use a journal like that, have those lyrics where they can just write the stuff that they're asking uh, to be yeah. set free from. Wow. Yeah. I think about like that. I think, you should, Jackie, I think you need to give her a call after the show and talk about this. That's yeah. a good idea. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> set me free journal. Why not? That's perfect yeah. right now. I'm Very good. okay. Anyway, sorry, Gina Thornetta. Okay. Thank you so much. We have thank to wrap you, thank this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We do. And let me tell you, our fortune goes perfect with being set free because it says you'll be traveling and coming into a fortune when you are set free. Woo! Are you serious? Hi, does it really up. say that? It does. Well, the set free part I added to it, but okay. the first yes. part, we gotta claim it. You, you gotta put that on the screen again. Let it, let it sit there for a minute. Put it up there real, real close. close. The first yeah, part was correct, and I added the second part. <laughs> you need to be to a fortune. That's okay. good. That's good. That's good. That yeah. is really good. Traveling and coming into I know, Jackie, that's why I was so excited to share it. I know. I've been <laughs> saying that all week. I said I can't wait to get back with the full band, and we go we to travel and, and share either. our message of love yes. and hope. Yes, that's yes. what I want to do. That's well, what we, we need. Can't, we can't wait. And you know what? Mm -hmm. Thank you for doing what you do. Because thank, thank um, you so you're, much. You're making a big impact on on a lot of us who don't have that kind of talent. But you you um, communicate the message for us yes. through your music. Thank we you thank so you for much, that, ladies. And you know, thank it's, it's you. women's power. You guys are doing a great thing here. You know, uh, every week, uh, me and, and a group of lady singers all get together and we Zoom. And it, it could be anywhere from five to 15 of us, but we're all like queens in our own singing towns, you know. But we get together and we talk awesome. out things. Just getting together like you guys are doing right now is such a great thing. Thank you for all this love and this female uh, spirit. And, and I believe it's the woman that's going to raise up all of this hate we're gonna, True. We're gonna lift the top of us yes. there you go. Get up in and there you go we're gonna get up and dance our blues away that's right, <laughs> and, All right. thank you and, and, thank you so I love my much song, sister you. friends indeed thank you you are my right. you're now some of my sister friends indeed that's yes. love, cool. love. <laughs> and you guys mm -hmm. next week i will see you guys down in detroit um, yeah, and we'll be celebrating the 200th episode. 200 amazing yes. interviews were booked the rest of the year Yay. with uh, you know, gifted people or people that have discovered their gifts and are using them, just like Miss Davis here. So thank you. 
Again, Thornetta, we can't wait to come out and see you live because there's nothing like a Thornetta Davis experience. Nothing like nothing it. Like it. <laughs> nothing like it. I cannot wait to see you and the band. Um, and ladies, I'll see you guys next week. Nora, wrap us up All here. All right. Sometimes the only mode of transportation available. Jackie. Is a leap of faith. Hey. Thanks for taking a leap of faith. <laughs> and happy hump happy day, Happy hump everyone. day. Happy Wednesday. Bye. 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 Bye.